I love afternoon tea. Ah, how's it going today? It's good to see you again. I did get you some tea as well. Just plain old black tea today. I hope you don't mind. My favorite's actually Earl Grey, but I, I ran out, so. Uh, anyway, so what's going on? You know what's on my mind today? Significant figures. That's what's on my mind. And what I'd like to talk to you about today, and hopefully teach you, I'd like to teach you about why significant figures are important in science. So there's really two types of quantities we have in science, right? Countable or measurable. You know, countable quantities are things you can, I don't know, count. Like the number of cups on the table, number of chairs in a room, number of tables, etc., etc., right? Those are countable. Two cups, one table, one chair, etc., etc. Okay, so those are exact values. Whereas measurable quantities are not exactly exact per se. For example, weight, right? That's a measurable quantity. You step on a scale, right? Uh, distance traveled, right? That's another measurable quantity. Uh, the volume of fluid in this cup. Again, it's a measurable quantity. Now, the problem with measurable quantities is that they're not always, or it's very difficult to get an exact number. For example, I step on the scale, and the scale reads 197 pounds. Do I weigh 197 pounds exactly? Well, what would that mean? That would mean I would weigh 197 point zero 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 all the way out to infinity. First of all, the scale is not even that sensitive, right? So it's not going to tell me with that amount of precision. Uh, but also, no object is measurable to the nth degree. So what's important here is that in science, we measure a lot of things. And significant figures helps communicate with certainty, the values of which we're certain of, and then there's one little uncertain digit at the end. Here, for example, take a look at this animation, all right, and estimate the amount of time that has elapsed. What do you think? What would you say? How much time has elapsed? 6.1. Did you say 6.8? That's what it looks like to me. Right? But you might say 6.7 or maybe 6.9, but it's around 6.8. We can definitely be certain it's 6, and we're kind of uncertain about the next value. Right? Maybe it's an 8, maybe it's a 7, maybe it's a 9. It's definitely not a 4. It's not 6.4, right? If it looks like it's 6.4, see your ophthalmologist. So how I'd like to now proceed here is I'd like to give you then rules for identifying significant figures. And by the way, before I move on to that, well, I didn't even... I didn't even finish what I wanted to mention. So going back to the clock example, forgive me, uh, what I wanted to mention was the fact that that's how we estimate the number of significant figures. We're certain that there's a six there, six point, and then we're uncertain about the last digit, right? 6.8, we'll say. So this value here of 6.8 has two significant figures. One that's certain, and then the last value that's uncertain. If we had three significant figures, then we would have two certain values, and the last one would be uncertain. Okay? Now, let's go on to the rules for identifying significant figures. Now, there's four rules, all right, that we need to know. So the first rule for identifying, identifying the number of significant figures there are in a value would be that always, all the time, rule number one is that values one through nine, a.k.a. non-zero values are always significant. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They're always, all the time, every time significant. So here, let's take a look at one example, right? How many significant figures are there in that value? Well, they're all not zeros, so there's five. Right? How about this value? Well, there's three, right? And then how about the last one? There's four. It's very straightforward. Rule number two. So rule number two is going to involve what I like to call trapped zeros. Any zeros that are trapped, right, that are in between two non-zero digits. Remember, anytime I'm saying non-zero, I mean the values one through nine. They're always significant. Trapped zeros are always significant. So take a look at this value, 101, 101. How many significant figures are there? Well, there is simply three because the two non-zero values, the one and the one, are significant, and then that zero's trapped. 
between the two ones. That's also significant. How about then the second example? What do we have there? What do you think? Four, right? Four, and then the last? Looks like six to me. Now, rule number three. All leading zeros, zeros that come before numbers, one through nine, are always never significant. So take a look at this, point zero 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 three two. How many significant figures? Simply two, right? We can apply rule number one to the three and the two, and then all those other zeros are called leading zeros. So they're never significant, okay? And then what do you think about the other two examples? Think about it for a minute. Uh, time's up. Uh, we had four significant figures and then three significant figures. All right, last but not least, rule number four. Trailing zeros now are only significant if a decimal is present. So what happens if I have the value 1,200, let's say? How many significant figures are there if there is no decimal in that number? Turns out only two, right? Because rule number one tells us that the one and the two are significant. And then rule number four here tells us that those trailing zeros are not significant because there is no decimal. Now what happens if I place the decimal in at the end of that value? How many significant figures are there now? Well, now there turns out to be four, right? The one and the two are still significant, and then the trailing zeros there are now significant as well. And then what do you think about the, well, what do you think about the bus coming through the room right now? Right? I think, I think it sounds great. Wow. Hold on. Sorry. Anyway, what do you think about the last two? At the last two values, right? We had four significant figures in the second one, and then six significant figures in the last one. Okay, we're going to apply all the rules to the last one. One, two, three, and four. So that's how we estimate the number of significant figures. Not even estimate. That's how we count right, the number of significant figures there are in a value. We can simply follow the four rules. Now what happens if we want to add or subtract two values together, two measured values together? Well, we have to take into account significant figures again. Right? How do we do this? Well, it turns out that when we're doing addition and subtraction, uh, we're going to be dealing with decimal places. So whenever you add two values together, the answer cannot have more decimal places than the value with the least decimal places. So for example, if you add these two values together, notice how the first value has only two decimal places and the second value has four decimal places. Sorry, guys. That's just the landscapers now. How many decimal places should the answer have? Well, the answer should now only have two decimal places. Why is that the case? Well, because the first number only had two decimal places. Right? Remember, the rule is adding and subtracting. We're only going to take into account the number of decimal places of the value that had the least. All right. So what we would have to do here for the answer is we would have to look to the third decimal place and see if that rounds the second decimal place up or it keeps it the same, all right? And then, last but not least, we can move on to multiplication and division. And when we multiply and divide values, this, I believe, is a little easier. Now we just totally look at significant figures. We don't care about decimal places. We don't, nothing like that, all right? So if you're gonna multiply, let's say, these two values together, and the first value we know from applying the rules of sig figs before, the first value has four significant figures in it, and the second value has two significant figures in it, the question is, how many significant figures then should this answer have? It should only have two. The reason being is because whenever you multiply and divide values together, you're only going to, your answer can only have the number of significant figures. I don't know what I'm saying. Let me try that again. Let me try that again. If you have two values in which you're multiplying and dividing, and the first one has four and the second one has two, your answer can only have two, the least of the two, 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 two. If that didn't confuse you, check out some more videos. I'm sure I'll confuse you there. Um, anyway, is there anything else I forgot? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. The only thing I do want to mention, though, is that I want you to practice, all right? And what I've done is in the description provided some... Uh, links to problems in which I've solved uh, significant figures for. So take a look there. I think you'll find them very helpful. All right. And it's always a pleasure.
All right, I do hope these tea times help. I need another drink. I'm sorry. How's yours, by the way? It's delicious, right? So until next time.